indicators and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the E-mini S&P. This is a four-hour chart going over the past uh, couple of weeks. As you can see here, we have a three-drive to a top pattern coming in here at uh, 4298. So far, we've been to 4291. We're still waiting for that. That would be the completing pattern that we were looking at. But folks, remember when you're looking at these markets, and this is really important, we talk about this all the time, is this is, you know, we've got several markets. We've got the Dow Jones E-mini, we've got the NASDAQ, which is basically 10 stocks, the Dow Jones, uh, which is about 16 stocks, we've got the S&P, which is uh, basically 500 stocks, and we've got the Russell 2000, which is the small cap, which is the second most po popular of the stock index. But look what we had going today uh, in the Dow Jones. Uh, right before this monster jobs number came out, we had this, uh, we were watching this pattern. Of course, we were, the thing we were waiting to get into, of course, was the E-mini S&P. We weren't going to do the Dow, but you can see that we had this really nice pattern up here. We had a perfect 135, you know, setting right at the 78% level. And then, of course, the uh, news came out of the jobs number, and then we all know, uh, you know, what happened after that. And that's why I wanted to show you what a pattern failure looks like, because when these patterns fail, folks, you've got to stand aside. The risk on this, had you been able to do that, would have been about 100 points. You had been out. And, of course, we've gone up now. We're right up a little above the 61% retracement or the high that we made, you know, way back there uh, in May. Now, if we take a look at the Russell 2000, which we've been following that uh, for quite some time also, and I wanted to bring that to your attention too because it, it is a, uh, it's a totally uh, different picture than what you might think. So let's take a look here at the Russell, and you're gonna, you'll be as surprised as I am when you see this, folks. It probably won't work today, but this has been at the, look at this, at the 382, folks. We've been there. One, two, three, four, five times. Now, this is the time where probably because we're up 2%, which is, uh, you know, way past one standard deviation, and it's right there at the 382 retracement again, and it, maybe it's going to break out to the upside. We got the VIX at the B, below a 15 handle. Uh, that's down 5%, folks, in one day. You talk about bullishness coming into the market. Boy, this is truly a bullish day no matter how you want to look at it. Now, if you look at this, a part of the things that we're watching with the Dow Jones, this came from our friends over across the pond, and they were looking for a strong market today, of course, because the pattern that we had in the Dow Jones, we, we talked about that 32,700, and now we're 1,100 points higher, or actually 1,200 points higher than that right now. We actually went quite above the target, but as we said here on Thursday, Wednesday, we made that beautiful, you know, it was a perfect bottom almost. Uh, well, it was perfect. That's when the S&P was down. Let's just get that up to remind everybody that these patterns, A, B, C, D and stuff work pretty well. That's when the, when the uh, S&P was trading at the 30, let's try it, 41.74 level, 41.76. And now we are over 100 handles higher than that in two days. That tells you how bullish uh, the market goes. It's not all related to artificial intelligence either, folks, because there's other things that are making the thing move as high as it has. Now, whether these patterns work or not, you know, I don't really know. All I do know is that one of the things that we were watching yesterday was the fact that we had a beautiful pattern in the short possibility in the gold market up there at the uh, 40, excuse me, 19. Uh, 95, 96 level, and of course, we're $30 lower 
uh, today on that. That's looked like it's moving lower. And since we're on to the gold, I wanted to bring you some information. Uh, I know Bert Doman of the Wellington Letter, one of the uh, finest fellows that I've ever met in this business and a real real champion of cycle analysis. But I wanted to show you his uh, view of the gold based on his cycle analysis. I just got this this morning. Someone was kind enough to send it to me. And you'll see that this is what we were looking for. You see that's at ABCD. This is the gold miner index. You can see the Gartley that formed several days ago. What we were doing was selling that 3A2 off of that. So that's what we were watching. Now, the other one I wanted to bring to your attention, of course, is the longer term picture that he's, he is extremely bullish on gold, folks. Uh, he's hoping for a four or $500 break uh, due to the uh, debt thing or whatever it's going to be. I don't know the fundamentals behind it, but this is the longer term picture. You know, he points out this massive resistance up here at this triple top. We all saw that. That was at 2070. And then now we're, you know, we're moving down. Remember, remember, we still have a 1505 target and that that's 60 dollars away. I don't expect to be short that whole sixty dollars, but the fact that it's moved thirty bucks the first day is is a good sign. Now that's a longer term chart. And I'm not in longer term and I'll tell you why, because the risk to go into a trade longer term is kinda tough. And I don't like to take these four and five thousand dollar risks like some of these folks do. To me that doesn't make any sense, especially since I know a lot of you folks are, you know, smaller uh, traders and stuff, and we're trying to find ones that you know give you a better a better chance of uh, getting into a market without breaking a leg. A perfect example of that was yesterday uh, when we were watching the euro. If you recall, we were watching that head and shoulders pattern that uh, came down into this area right here, and then we exploded to the upside. Now the the uh, euros backed off a little bit today, about 50 pips, but we're still well over 100 uh, 100 pips ahead in this and so we put our stop in so we lock in a minimum of five hundred dollar profit sir we have to get some up give some of up but the only way you can do that is to stay in some of these and hold them for a little bit longer that's what we were trying to do in the soybeans and we got stopped out on the exact low tick folks and this thing has not stopped going down at all i'll just i'll just show you you won't even believe where it is because it's a uh, it's just about ready to take out twelve dollars uh, twelve a bushel, and uh, you'll see here we were trying to buy it on the pullback last night, but we got down a little bit lower here, and then it just exploded to the upside, and it continues to go higher. That's one we missed, and that happens. You know, it's a, it's you're never going to be perfect about this, but if you think it doesn't bother me, you're absolutely wrong because it does bother me because I miss it. And you miss it, and that's not any fun. We had great fun uh, in the gold market. We've had great fun in the euro. We've had great fun in the bonds. Uh, we did take a small, small, small loss on our last bond trade, but the, the other three were were po uh, very, very uh, popular to the upside. Uh, and also, the natural gas is acting really nicely. That's we were trying to buy that yesterday at 215, and it got all the way up to 224 which was our first profit objective. So we're going to stay tuned for a little, uh, what we call uh, commercial. And when we get back, we got some other charts that we want to share with you. So stay with us here, folks. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Okay, folks, I, I put a chart up here. It's a weekly chart of the December wheat. And uh, I just want you to see the very large ABCD pattern. Remember, back here at the top, this was wheat was trading at $13.50 a bushel, and everybody in the whole world wanted it. And uh, now it's trading at under $6 a bushel. Well, actually, it's got the 610. It's trading around 634 right now. But uh, you know, nobody wanted it at that particular point. That's what these patterns are really trying to show you is supply demand. When I posted that chart of the E-mini S&P uh, at that uh, number of 4290, uh, 4297, I believe, uh, high has been 4291.5, that is just a completed pattern. But just like the Dow Jones, it might fail. But remember, the Dow Jones is really only 16 stocks. I mean, you're talking about Apple, Meta, I mean, these real expensive stocks. And because it's price-weighted and not cap-weighted, those price of those stocks that are heavily, uh, that are he overpriced, or not overpriced, but uh, high-priced, it makes the index move faster and up and down. So that's why you have to pay close attention to that because it, it's a situation that will really move very, very quickly against you just based on a few stocks like uh, Goldman Sachs or Apple, Meta, you know, it's trading for uh, 400. Uh, uh, Tesla's not in the Dow, but, uh, you know, Goldman Sachs is, you know, all those will make it move very, very quickly. Now, with the Russell 2000, you've got 2,000 stocks, so that doesn't move nearly uh, as quickly. And with the S&P, you've got 500 stocks. But there's a problem with those 500 stocks. Not a problem, but I just wanted to show you this because I showed it yesterday. And to me, it's the most amazing thing that I've seen statistically in a very long time. And this is the S&P 500. Okay. And as you can see, that 493 of these companies are making up does not make up the market the market is made up by seven seven companies in this index are bigger than the energy section the material section the uh, financial section and one other section that i'll tell you in just a second and that is the industrials all four of those sectors 
are not as large as the seven largest companies in the even or the in the S&P 500 which are Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Nvidia, Meta which is Facebook and Tesla. Folks, that is a skewed distribution so you got to be really really careful uh, up in here and no matter whatever you do is always you know put a stop position in there and to protect yourself and you'll be uh, far better off than uh, you wouldn't be uh, any other way we're almost to our uh, price now in the dow jones we're getting uh, oh my goodness we're really getting close to it now we're only uh only about four or five points away so that's going to be a really interesting one to pay attention to so we're going to be watching that one really close for sure that's uh, the main thing to uh, remind ourselves of that when we're when we're doing that we want to be able to uh, make sure that we cover that uh, uh, when it gets there and hopefully it'll be there while we're on the air here but we're only on the air for another 32 minutes but you can make it quite easily but that number I'll just bring it up to you again now this might fail but this has got everything that this is mother God and country if you're a pattern recognition swing trader you can't ask for anything more than this you just got to be patient to wait for it but there it is at uh, 40 uh, 4298 roughly 4300 we're at 4293 right now you've got the ABCD pattern perfectly you've got the 1.618 expansion of that move right here at 1.618 also you know so you're risking what 10 points uh, you know on the market and remember down in here folks you know we said this market was probably going to go a lot higher because that's when we had the Dow Jones making the daily Gardley pattern that that was a that was an easy one to pick to pick out. So we we thought it was going to go higher. I know several people have asked me, you know, why I, I didn't go long. I didn't I did not go go long because I I wasn't short and I just didn't want. Uh, I, I had too much going on. I was long the euro, okay, I, and I was a little upset about getting stopped out on the low tick in soybeans. Uh, the gold trade was working out. Uh, really nicely that the natural gas trade had worked out real nicely uh, and uh, we had one other one in there that was uh, pretty good well we had been short the S&P down uh, to the 41 uh, to that uh, 41 uh, 39 level and then we hadn't been in it since that time but I just can't do all of them and I've been focusing on the grains because I see a, a major bottom so that's why I can't get it but this was the, the one we're looking at now in the S&P that's uh, that's the kind that you wait for either up or down doesn't make any difference because sometimes you know the ABCDs are to the downside, and that's uh, that's also what you're looking at as you're as you're following through with some of these. So that that's really what I'm trying to do when I'm doing these. I I wait for them uh, the best I can to give you the you know the lowest possible risk that we can do. The one thing that we haven't had happen, knock on wood, is to have long strings of losses. We've had two or three losses in a row, but we've had also you know quite a few profits in a row too but not long strings of losses and that's what you want to do is you want to remind yourself that you don't want to put yourself in the framework of uh, you know trying to dig yourself out of a really bad hole because uh, those holes are not very much fun and it's really uh, something that you just don't want to uh, get away from we're out now only five points away uh, in the uh, the, the S and P. So we'll see. It's got two and a half more hours to go uh, in the in the market. Was it one, two, three? Yeah, two and a half more hours to go to get to that. But uh, I will be surprised if it doesn't make it. But that's the main thing. But here's something to keep in mind, and I'm going to do more work on this. This is that picture of the S and P showing you how the skew is 493 stocks and seven stocks that are making the thing go. You can see that's there's your seven stocks right here, and the rest of it is down in here. If this is true, you're looking at a three drive to a top pattern. There's drive one, there's drive two, and there's drive three. Plus you have the larger A B C D pattern, and it's already completed, and it's all Nasdaq related. So uh, that'll be very. And we did make a new high uh, in the Nasdaq today. And uh, I think we made the secondary high too. But the the leader of the pack today, of course, has been the Dow Jones.
because it, and the S and P, uh, and both of them are, are moving pretty good. But uh, that that's a completed pattern. Now it probably is uh, one of those kinds that's going to fail. But no matter what, you know, we've had a nice day so far in the euro. We had a nice day in the gold market, a good day in the natural gas market, and we're waiting to see if we're going to get filled here uh, in the S and P here. Uh, relatively shortly to see if it's going to work. But uh, I've got my mind focused so much on these grains because I think something really big is getting ready to happen in that grain market, folks. I, I sent a special a report out this week, and the main thing that I was uh, uh, watching, of course, here was this uh, 382 here on the uh, – on the July soybeans and we hit it and then went a little bit below it and had our stop a little too soon and now it's about 60 cents higher and so we're going to be doing our best to get in that. We're going to take a break here and then when we get back we're going to have Bob Miner of the Dynamic Trader as our guest. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I believe we have Bob Miner, Dynamic Trader, on the line. Bob, are you there? I'm here. Bob, you know what? You're only about uh, 2,700 miles farther away than you were before when you lived three miles away from me here in Tucson. Exactly. <laughs> hey, where, exactly. where do you live now? You live in Greenville, North Carolina? Uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. Greensboro, okay. And do you like it there? I like it a lot. I really like Good. North Carolina. 
Well, I bet you they like you, too. Well, we've known each other a long time, and I want to congratulate you. I just saw what you finished third in the World Cup uh, Trading Championship, and there's a lot of people in that thing. So uh, congratulations to you, my friend. I know you've done those before and have done well. So you've got something that uh, you want to talk to us about. I posted the chart up here uh, of the S&P. So do you want to start there and tell us what you're looking at? And then later in the show, we'll tell the folks how they can reach you. And you've got a special program for them and stuff. So why don't you talk to us about what we're seeing in the markets right now, Bob? Okie doke. Uh, first, about that trading contest. That's like the sixth one in the last six years that I've been in the top five places. So I show wow. that not to warrant that anybody's going to get those kind of returns necessarily. And by the way, it's real money, real trading. But I look at markets as someone looking for a specific trade. Um, and, and trading every day. So those are some of the results I've had. So I don't look to be a forecaster. I don't like forecasting because that's not what trading is about. Trading is about identifying a specific trade and then managing that trade. So let's go to the chart. And uh, that's okay. we're talking about the weekly SPX. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's the one we're looking at. And okay. we're looking, yep. Yeah. So far well, it's, it's very timely that we're going to talk about that now. Because for uh, several weeks, uh, I've identified some time factors and price factors, whereas next week, the weekend in June 9th, should be the maximum time to complete a weekly high. It's probably going to be done this week. It's probably going to be a, you know, buy the news, sell the fact. Um, now that they, I, I'm assuming they have some sort of agreement on the debt ceiling because the it was a big update today. I don't don't watch news, but I'm assuming that. But uh, I think that's going to coincide with a very significant top in in the stock indexes. Um, so we have a momentum cycle that's at an extreme. Actually, made a bear reversal last week. We have a price not too far above the market that around that area, around twenty forty two forty four, would be probably the, about the maximum upside. And then next week is the maximum weekly target. So uh, what's important about this? Uh, is that the advance, if you, if you use Elliott Wave, I use very practical, simple Elliott Wave. It's really helpful for making yep. trading decisions and understanding market position. But the advance off of the October low, the only way you can look at this from an Elliott Wave perspective is as a correction, a complex correction, probably A, B, C, D, E. If that's the case, what follows a correction? Well, a resumption of the trend prior to the correction to a new extreme. So here's how I, I word it. And, and the wording is very important to get your mind uh, focused correctly, is that the S&P is reaching an extreme position from where a weekly high is made, which was being in a position to complete the corrective advance off of the October low. So I don't know if that's going to happen but I know it's in a position I'm going to be looking for a trade here in the next few days on the bear side with the potential okay. for at least a three to five week decline and potentially to continue down much lower, well below the March low. Oh, well below the March low. That, that's a significant correction. Yeah. OK, now the that's, next one we're that's going to the take possibility. A that's that's what the market is in a position to do now is, you know, it's all trade strategies and trade management, how you take take advantage of that potential trade. OK, now the next one uh, we're going to be looking at is a blow up of that larger one that shows the price area that you're looking at. You got them circled up there. And I think we're pretty close to those levels right now, aren't we, Bob? I haven't yes. updated it, yes, but it looks like we're pretty much spot on at those those levels. Yes, we're. I mean, we're we've probably uh, either touching or maybe even slightly exceeded that. You're talking about the forty two, uh, forty four price level. Yes, or that's you're what talking I'm getting about. At. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it's probably getting real close to that today, and uh, that's a that's a really key level. That's just real simple, hundred percent alternate price projection of that December to February advance. And uh, the uh, next week is the maximum time to make a reversal, typical anyway. And that's a really important time factor that most people don't look at. It's the low to low to high. So it's the December low 
to March low uh, to the next high would be the week ending June 9th. And that's, that's not the time target to reverse. It's the maximum time target from where a comparable reversal should be made. Okay. I have a question, Bob. I, you know, you and mm-hmm. I have known each other for a long time, and I've watched you develop um, – you know some of your software and stuff do you still do the dynamic trader software where you do the wave counts and you know the theoretical uh, relationships of the patterns and stuff do you still do that you're looking at it that's what those so screen it. captures are oh, that, oh that's a screen jackson well there, there you go I had, well Bob, yeah. it's been a long time since i've seen it. it's probably been 10 years and because yeah, of right. the fact yeah. with COVID yeah. and stuff, but uh, anyway, that that stuff really does work. I've seen it over and over how well it's done. Um, now, there's one other. We got a couple other charts here that I want to cover. We're going to have a break here and then a short uh, inter- intermission, and then we'll get back to something else. But these are key factors uh, from the Dynamic Traders Report. Do you want to tell the folks? Uh, just read read to us uh, so the people that are that are in the uh, cars and stuff and, and watching this a little later, get an idea of what you're doing here with this dynamic trader worksheet that you have. Sure. Um, I just completed, it's about a 38 page pre-election year uh, cycle report. As you know, there's what's called the presidential election cycle, the four year cycle, and that each year of that four year cycle has some biases to it. The pre-election year, which is this year, and this report I did is just on the pre-election year. So I did it in more depth than I think anybody's ever done, anybody's ever seen. So these are just three of the biases that everybody should be aware of in a, any pre-election year, including this year. Number one is that since 1950, there's only been one pre-election year that closed down on the year, and that was just down 1%. All the other pre-election years have closed up on the year. And that's a significant piece of information to have. Now, that doesn't mean every year is just consistently bullish throughout the year. There can be a lot of volatility. But more than likely, by the end of the year in a pre-election year, the market's going to close above the open. And that can be very significant because the March low is basically at the open of the year. Uh, And then in uh, 16 of the 18 pre-election years, there is a distinct low made around October, November, followed by a fairly meaningful advance that averaged about 10 percent. So that's uh, uh, we're going to take a break here. We come back. I want you to tell the folks how they can get in touch with you. And you've got a special offer for them. How's that? Oh, you know. Okay, we're right back with Bob Miner of uh, Dynamic Trader, folks. Stay with us. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Bob Miner of the Dynamic Trader. And Bob, tell the folks... Uh, it's Bob at DynamicTraders.com. Is that correct? Uh, no. To get a hold of me, touch base with me, it's uh, DT at DynamicTraders.com. Uh -huh. But you can go to okay. the website at DynamicTraders.com and uh, get all the information. And you can uh, re sign up for our Traders News for absolutely free, and you get free updates we, we send you. Is that with a money-back guarantee? Yeah, absolutely double your money back <laughs> <laughs> hey folks listen this guy is one of the best elliott wave guys i've ever met and the reason why is he doesn't sit there and worry about twos threes and fives he gets it down to where you say buy here sell here so i've always respected that about you bob so you've done a great job over the years two questions uh do you ever hear from carolyn broden anymore oh yeah is she doing okay yeah, yeah. she's retired she now, is she's she? doing Fantastic in Las Vegas there. Oh, my goodness. That's good. And the second question is, do you remember Mason Sexton? I certainly do. Yeah. You know, he's coming back onto the limelight. You know, his son was in the CIAs on Fox all the time. But I saw a, mm -hmm. um, a thing from Mason, and he is really calling for uh, a major depression starting in the United States here in July. And I was really shocked because I, I'd known Mason quite a bit. I've been to his home in Manhattan right. several times, and uh, he's a really sharp guy. But, uh, gosh, he's been – he's been uh, well, he's only been dealing with specialized clients for the past uh, 15 years. But he's coming back. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get him as a, uh, a guest also. But I want to thank you for being our guest today. And maybe uh, uh, down the road you'd like to come back on, especially if you see, see something, uh, you know, really important like what you're looking at right here. And, of course, Bob, you know, if you're wrong on this one, we'll never hear from you again. So we want to wish you a happy life. You know, we're <laughs> – Yeah, you can delete these, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case, you and I would we would have been deleted a long time ago if that were the case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us, my friend, and I hope to run into you one of these days. Okay, take care. You bet, folks. Bob Miner of the Dynamic Traders. Used to live here in Tucson when we first got here uh, in 93. He was already living here. I came here because this is where uh, uh, Walt Bressert used to live, and I got to know Walt very well. And I always loved the weather. And, of course, Bob was here and a whole bunch of other people. So we used to have our meetings and stuff about, well, every three weeks we'd get together on a Saturday morning and we'd all discuss stuff. So he's done a great job. And, and he worked with uh, Jerry Pegden. Uh, Jerry was from uh, New York, and he worked for, oh, no, Henry Kaufman is who he worked for. And uh, Jerry told us some wonderful stories uh, about Henry Kaufman. I'll tell you one right now that is really funny. And uh, they were in a meeting at he was with uh, Solomon Brothers, and they were discussing about going into junk bonds. This was back in the early 80s when, uh, you know, Drexel was going crazy with the junk bond market. And uh, 
they were going to have a vote at Solomon Brothers on how, whether they should go into junk bonds or not. And Jerry was at the meeting. He is a PhD in economics, and uh, he was uh, Kaufman's right hand man. And Henry he, Jerry told a story to me, and I've, I've heard it before because I've seen it in print. Henry Kaufman got up and he said, "I'll tell you what, folks," he said, "if we go into junk bonds, my partnership." is up for sale for 50 cents on the dollar to anybody who wants to buy it. And there was dead silence in the room. And one of the other guys got up, one of Kaufman's friends, looked at him, he said, folks, if this tight SOB wants to do that, we ain't going into junk bonds. And they never did. And that's a true story. Anyway, that's what I got from Jerry, and Jerry was a pretty good uh, a straight shooter about that kind of stuff. But anyway, it was a rather funny story about his feeling about junk bonds. The other story about Henry Kaufman was in August the 9th of 1982. Henry Kaufman came out and said interest rates will start lower for the next 25 years. And uh, that was the bottom of the bond market and the bottom of the stock market, August 9th of 1982. Just go look at your charts and you can see what happened. He lived a long and happy life. Henry Kaufman did. I was old, I met him just a couple times, but uh, he was really a pretty good guy. I was lucky. I got to meet some pretty sharp guys, Paul Volcker, Milton Friedman, uh, Henry Kaufman. Uh, so I was pretty lucky. I was probably a couple other. Well, I'm, none other than Napoleon, Napoleon Hill and W. Clement Stone, and Tony Robbins. I met some really fun people through my life, and I've been very, very fortunate. Anyway, folks, uh, that pattern that we're looking at here in the S and P may or may not work. It's got all the things. Uh, the fact that you, if you just looked at Bob's charts there and you saw where the highs were made, they were they were at jobs reports. You don't think someone would put a number that would be wrong, do you, like 319,000 jobs and maybe it should be 106? Well, what they do is in a week or two or a couple of months, they might correct that. Say, oh, they, we may, we uh, inter interpolated the digit wrong or something. And believe me, if you don't think they do that kind of stuff, they do. That's why I'm a chartist is I'm watching that kind of stuff to see that it doesn't happen too often. It does. But that's neither here nor there. So nothing else you can, uh, nothing else you can do about it. So let's just uh, remind ourselves of that. Uh, regarding the uh, the gold trade, I po posted this up here so you could see what we were looking at yesterday, because it uh, lined up uh, just really. Uh, just about absolutely perfect. Now, this was the June contract. We hadn't rolled over to the August yet, and uh, that's uh, what we're looking at. Uh, that number in the August came in at uh, 1996, and now uh, we're trading at 1966. So that's been a been a good move for us. The euro's done really well today. The, nat the natural gas is done. That's made about $500. Uh, I didn't go long, the S&P, not, not because I didn't see that it was going up, is the fact that I just didn't put the order in. And believe me, when we were down there in the Dow Jones uh, the other day, I mean, this was a this was flat out no brainer. I mean, we talked about it uh, on this. The, we talked about it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, every day this week because we were off on Monday. And now you know, we went all the way up here. This is a high today it was just a little above the 61 percent retracement level. So that was a beautiful Gartley. And I miss that one, but I, like I say, I miss some and some I get. That's basically it. One thing, one thing I do do is I don't let it bother me, except when it's soybeans, because I got stopped out on the low tick uh, within one penny. And uh, we, we still were way ahead on the, on the three positions that we put on, but we gave half of it back. And then to get stopped out on the low tick, you got to just shake it off. And forget that you left money on the table, and that's what I'm doing. So I've got orders in uh, on wheat to uh, buy it back. I'll I'll just show you. It came very very close today uh, in the wheat market uh, of getting filled on this order, but the the problem was it didn't want to go down another two pennies to get filled, and so it left and uh, went up another twelve cents. But it'll give us a chance. One thing about these markets, they don't stop trading. They they come back and. You know, they'll be right back with you right away. The next time you're ready to put a trade on, you just have to get ready to prepare for it. Preparation is a lot of it. but uh, And the other thing is, is to try not to get emotionally involved. In fact, the, the only thing I was emotionally involved about with the soybeans fact that I got stopped out on the low tick. That 
doesn't feel very well, but you have to get through it. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, and we want to thank Bob Miner for being our guest today. Uh, I want to leave you with that uh, the last chart, of course, uh, uh, was the uh, that three drive pattern uh, in the S and P E mini, and that comes in at uh, 4198, I believe, and we went to 4194, and okay, well, we could go to 4300, 4500, who knows? But because when they fail, they fail badly. Anything above that 1.618 level would be uh, would be. Uh, well, we cut. Well, you would be selling at 42.98, and your stop would be at 43.08. And then, if you get stopped out, we look at it again on Monday uh, to see what happened. But the emotionalism today is very high when you've got the VIX down more than five percent in one day. That's two standard deviations, uh, and we've had big moves now. And we also, I just noticed that the Russell was above the 382. Of the uh, the high from last uh, let's see, was it November? 
uh, by just by a little bit, but at least it's done it, uh, and it's only done it five times over the past few years, or past few months. So that's another one. So uh, these markets are, and we are above the 61% retracement. I'll show you that here again in the Dow. You'll be able to see that blue line that we're above that by about 20 point 20 Dow points right now. So uh, it's with two hours to go. A lot of things can happen. It's like uh, Basil says, you know, it's still early in the day, but who knows whether that's going, uh, whether that's going to to be the case or not. But uh, next week, um, the next week, what we're going to do is uh, our, one of our guests uh, is going to be Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights, and I'm also hoping to get Mason Sexton from uh, Harmonic. Uh, gosh, I can't remember. Harmonic timing, I think is what he called it. Uh, he's a really smart guy. And, uh, and uh, hey, listen, we'll see you on Monday, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.